Hey everybody, uh, today we have an Optima HD 180 to look at. Uh, this particular projector I actually picked up on eBay. It was in the uh, amazing parts or repair category and I got it ridiculously cheap. Um, and I hope what I think is wrong with it is what's wrong with it. But we will find out momentarily. So this looks a lot like an HD 20 or an HD 33 or 23. There's another one. And then I noticed these uh, awesome ceiling mounts. That's interesting. I don't like that, but we'll get those out. Um, mostly, it looks like it's a decent projector. It came with a remote. It came uh, with the power cord and it was packaged really well. I'm just going to try and get these out because it's not, not the right thread. See? Look how chewed up those are. That's a metric thread. Remember, most, if not all, things made overseas are using metric. So don't try to jam SAE stuff in there if you can help it. But let's uh, let's double check the uh, lamp assembly before we fire it up. I just want to make sure there's nothing. I'm not going to make anything worse. It is curious how this door is so discolored. Oop, so far, this is looking like an original lamp assembly, like the original lamp assembly. Is an Osram PVIP 230 0.8 E20.8. I think that makes this a BLFP 230D. The uh, IR coating looks good. It does have a lot of wear though. That that this is pretty old. Might actually switch it out. What I think happened. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this. Probably not. The uh, color wheel flew apart. See in there? Oh, see in there? Empty. It's just a uh... look. Watch. Come on, light, get in there. There we are. See, there's no glass segments, so that color wheel got too hot and flew apart. This lamp assembly should be fine for making sure it does turn on. I just have to uh, source a color wheel, and I want to say I saw it on eBay for like 30 bucks. 25, 30 bucks. I'll, I'll probably go through my uh, usual vendor though, because I like them, and then I don't have to worry. I think somebody was uh, trying to get in here. Or that happened in shipping. Let's see. So what I expect we will see if this comes on is the uh, picture will be black and white. Bet you they unplugged the keyboard. Yeah. Or maybe not. I don't know. Because now it's turning on. So use the remote. There we go. I don't hear any fans. And that is definitely a... Uh, yeah, getting nothing from that keyboard. I wonder if it's locked out. But we do have the menu. Ah, uh, there we are. There's fans. And let's see. Background color. Gray. Dark blue. So that should be dark blue in the background. It's not. This is all just shades of gray, as you see up here. 
So, fan failure. Okay, so this is going to need some love. That's fine. First thing we're going to do is take the uh, lens shroud off. Just pull straight up. It's got those little catches right there. Gets that out of the way. Then there are three, three screws to remove. That, that screwdriver is too thick to get to. Let's get my, my favorite screwdriver. This one. It's a uh, PH1 made by Wea. I love their tools. I, I swear by these. I heard what sounded like one of those brass inserts falling loose. Oh, it was plugged in. What the hell? Oh my god. They tried to, whoever was in here tried to glue this into the connector on the wrong side. Oh, that's funny. They had, I'll show you. So they had the keyboard wire here. They had it plugged in, right? But they had that on the bottom blocking the connection. It's supposed to be on the back side to give you, you know, some thickness for it to connect to. I just hope that's not ruined. It is dusty. And we did have a fan failure. Ah, uh, did you hear that? This is what was jamming the fan. Oh, there we go. That's what was jamming the fan, the blue segment. And then these guys, oh, there we are. And these guys fell out too. These are the uh, brass inserts that go on the top case. So we'll see if we can fix all that. If we can find all the plastic bits. I'm willing to bet whoever had it open before me uh, lost those. So what I want to do is, you know, this one I can definitely fix even though it looks like that. And this one, maybe there's enough of that left. I might be able to glue that in. And then this one's definitely repairable. What happens... Yep, there's the color wheel. What happens is the uh, it gets hot. The fans, like that fan is pretty dusty. The fans get kind of clogged and then the uh, wheel heats up and then that metal expands and contracts and then it breaks the glue. You can see that the, uh, come on. You can see that the segments have like a little bit of glue on the end there, that stuff. That's one full segment. It just whoosh, flew out when that spun up. The other ones are probably in here somewhere. Let's see. Let's uh, let's take that wheel out, or what's left of it. The hub. We'll take the hub out. I think I have one. I'm gonna look, but I think I have a harvested wheel. Like a used but good wheel. Look at that. Even the uh, index mark got chewed up. There must have been some segments hitting against that. 
Now look at that, it's totally empty in there. That groove, there's no glass in there, so all those segments just flew out. It doesn't look too bad otherwise, though. It really could be much worse. Let me get the drill. that one there. All right, the top looks okay. Let's unplug the ballast control Exhaust fan control. And then let's spin her around and let's disconnect. This thing has to come out. I don't want to bend it. say so that I don't lose or mix up the screws. I'm just going to set those in there. Because this is basically an HD20 inside. I think the HD20 is a tiny bit brighter, but since lumens are logarithmic, unless it's 10 times more, it's really not that much of a difference. Um, I think the HD20 is still technically a little better model though although really I think most people would be happy with either or they're both 1080 they both have dual HDMI so all right and then let's get that come on hmm. unplug that that looks good set this over here this is where I wanted to get because I want to clean that out and let's see we'll blow that out that looks way better and I just kind of wanted to give these capacitors an eye these guys make sure they're not bloated they're not all right so I guess most of the segments already fell out let me go, uh, I'm going to go hit this with the vacuum in the air. Be right back. All right, that is now clean. Now it is time to deal with the color wheel. And I got to see if I can find, let me go find my other one. And I think this is it. This one says it's for an HD20. Part number 70.8EG37R01. Let's see what's on this old one here. There we are, Cortronic. Oh, come on. Focus. Cortronic. So if you ever buy a color wheel for yourself, for your projector, they all have the sticker on it. You want to get that info and make sure that your new wheel matches that info as much as possible. Now, I'm not sure what sort of variations you're allowed to have because this one, let's see, let's see, this one says it's a 2388EG19G01. And this one says it's a 23.8EG19G013A. And this one is 4K. 
So I'm wondering if that's just like a, a date, manufacturing date. Now I'm pretty sure this one's used. But that feels good. And actually, what I could do is reuse the motor. Because that actually feels like it spins better. Hmm. Now well, let's see what happens. Because that this might be a, an old one. I'm trying to remember. Let's see, but let's move the uh, sensor. All right, <clears throat> so let's put that back in. And we'll put, not back in, we'll put this one in. And then hopefully that motor's in good shape. And if it's not, I can uh, switch hubs. I can use the old hub. Really, I just want to make sure it works. Oops, wrong screws. If it works, then what I'll do is I'll order a new one. Let me put the right one in. Uh, let's see. Is that this one? No, definitely not. Got to be these. Yeah. That was weird. Whoops. Oh, I see there's some with uh, Loctite on them. And the ones without, we want the ones without. Okay, so let's move all that over. Let's put that main board back in. Plug in power first. Just going to put one screw here to hold. without the uh, without the 
shield, there's a piece of metal that goes there. I just want to keep this from pulling up off the, uh, the DMD board. All right, then let's get that. This faces, connectors face down. That plugs in, it's good. Now, let's get let's see if this let's see how bad this is. I'm, I'm a little concerned about this. This might be uh, this might be damaged. I might be using the remote. Should do is really just glue this back together. That's what I'm gonna do. There we go. It's uh, far from good, but good from afar. So I'm hoping that this will work. Let's put this back in here. I was thinking about even flipping it around. But I'm worried that if this connector is damaged at all, because of that, if I plug that into there, I might damage that connector too. At least as it stands now, if there's a problem, I just have to change the one cable and the one connector maybe. Because we were getting LEDs, which was weird, but nothing else. Set it. We're just going to set it on top. And let's back you guys out a little. Now, let's see what happens. Alright, let's see if the power button works now. Nope. Something tells me that connector's mangled. I think I heard the wheel spin up. Yep, I did. We have color. I think we have both fans. Yep. Just focus that a little better. Composite, no signal. Let's get inside and look at the menu. It's very dim. I definitely want to uh, put a new lamp in this 65 hour. There's no way that's 65 hour. Let's see, do we have a color test? Let's do grid, white. Yeah, it looks all right. All right, let's try something. I think it was power left, left up. No. Oh, right, I can't. <laughs> uh, let's see, power, left, left, up. Oh. There we are. So, off, left, left, up gets us into this screen. 
here we are. This is what I was looking for. Display hour, 4871. So, this lamp probably has like almost 5,000 hours on it, I'm guessing. That looks good. Temperature, burn-in test, internal pattern test. We'll run that. But this is pretty good. <clears throat> I'm glad that wheel worked out because I, uh, I thought it was new. Just nice to know that I do have some parts around, which is pretty sweet. Let's see. Spoke test? I don't know what that is. Oh, okay, so we're just going through the colors. Alright. Let's try that again. So, there we are. Power left, left up. Let's see what kind of errors we've had. No lamp fail errors, that's good. Lamp shut down. We've had a few. We had one at 0 hours and 20 minutes, 951 hours, and then the one from earlier in the video, the 64 hour. Let's see what our fan failures say. Just that one that we saw. And then over temp? Nothing. All right, I like that too. Good. So let's do let's do a full factory reset. All right, and then let me get out of here. And let's turn it off. I think I'm gonna try and flip. I'm gonna try and flip this wire around and see if I can get that working. Or I can look through my junkyard and find a very nice looking keyboard cable. Let's see if that solves it. I actually found the keyboard too. Um, it looks like I have a, a scrapped HD something. Um, something in this series because it has the same keyboard, but I don't have the whole unit anymore, so I'm not really sure. Let's see, so that's gonna be this way. because I'd really like to sell this unit with the summer coming around. I'm recording this in the springtime. People are going to want to do outdoor movie theaters at their house. And uh, I hate when people buy those terrible projectors on Amazon. They're just awful. You know, the cheapies. Vankyo and whatnot. They're junk. So... I'm hoping they uh, want to buy a real projector and they can just buy a used one. You know, this was, what, $1,500 or two grand when it was new. If you could buy this for two two fifty, you'd be in great shape, especially if it has a good lamp in it. Hey, button works. So where's... There we are. All right, I'm going to put that with the old color wheel. So I'm going to put all the junk parts in there. I like it. It's looking good. I think now what I'll do is I'm going to see if I have any lamps around that we can redo that assembly with. Let's see, what's this? I got a PVIP 221.0 E20.8. That's a maybe. I think that's good. Yeah, that's new. Let's see, that's old. That's old. That's old. I don't know why I have those. Are they even 20.8s? 
20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, Running a 220 watt lamp at 230 watts is not really a big deal, especially in this case, because I said so. No, actually, electrically, it's fine. Um, it, my personal opinion is that all of these are basically the same lamp, whether it says 220, 230, or 240. I have a feeling if we were to hear from Osram, They'd say, uh, yeah, they're all the same. Because I can't see why they would have multiple production lines for such a close, you know, spec. So, I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm just speculating. But just from what I've seen. Now, if this was a repair, we would use a just a new lamp assembly altogether but since this is not for my day job and for you know something I'm gonna try and hook somebody up with on the cheap we will uh, use we'll use this lamp again the 10 watt difference is really not a big deal uh, really my my personal uh, rule is that I go by a 50 watt variance, uh, 25 up and down. So this I would consider a 230 watt rated lamp anywhere from eh, about 200, say 205 up to about 255. So 200, 250. I figure the number they have on there is about the middle and the most optimum uh, point. The ballast is what determines the actual power delivered to the lamp. So even if you put a 250 watt lamp in, if your ballast is only 220 watts, you know, 230 watts, that's all the power that's going to the lamp. It's kind of like a uh, amplifier, um, a ballast. I mean, really, it is an amplifier. Wow, this thing's beat. See all that white down in there? That's the uh, all the crud from the uh, the arc tube. Yeah, this thing's hot. <laughs> That's hot. I'm sorry. Hot, very hot. Almost melted my gloves, but not quite. All right, so the lens looks good. I like that. No cracks. Is that a crack? Or is that just, oh no, it's just dirt. Dust. Schmutz. It's a technical name. So let's set this guy in here. Get it kind of straight. Yep, like that. That little nub right there because that sits on the nub. Wait till you see the uh, picture difference. It's amazing. Between, you know, a 5,000 hour and a uh, uh, essentially no hour. I'm pretty sure this is new. 
Oh, no, it's got a little bit of a cracking on it, so it has some use, but there's no, uh, I don't see any, I don't see any deposits in the arc tube. It doesn't seem like it's been used much if it's been used. Mm. There we are. See, these were not, see how it's, that should be a lot tighter. So it just pops off. Let me give it a little, just a little bit. Oop, that was way too much. Dang it. That's okay. It just makes it a lot harder to slide on. I just wanted to give it a little squeeze. Get my little flat head and get that end open a little. What happens is, over the years, the heating and cooling caused the metal to flex. And then, when you pull off the connector, it no longer has any spring to it to regrip the new terminal. So this is why I, one of the reasons, well that's not the only reason, but it's one of the reasons I don't like to recommend relamps which is what I'm doing here where I replace just the uh, lamp inside the assembly or the bulb whatever your preferred nomenclature is I tend to go by bulb and lamp but I know technically the bulb is actually the arc tube in there and that this whole thing is the lamp housing but I think about it like a table lamp you have the assembly that the bulb goes in and then you put your bulb in there we go the whole point of this rear shroud is to direct the airflow around the uh, inside to protect or to get like the the heating get the heat out and the cool air in to protect the uh, life of the lamp assembly the cooling air is blown in by that squirrel cage fan that we looked at on the inside blows in through here, so the air comes in there, swirls around, cools things, comes out here, but it also comes out through here. And so that when it's installed, we don't have it go the wrong way. They have this in here and that keeps everything in position. There we go, that's on, that's all on. All right, let's pop her in. Let's see if I am right or if I made a huge mistake. There we go. All the uh, fasteners are back in, holding the shield in place. The wires are plugged in. Uh, I think what I want to do now is actually slide that out of the way and see what we can do with this. I'd really like to... See if I can, you know, fix these. Because let's see, it went this way. Like that. That's how it was. Oh, you guys can't really see that. Let's zoom in. So there it is. That's it right there. And what I could do is just put a little bit of super glue around it. I think that's what we'll try first. This is uh, thick super glue. It's uh, this stuff works pretty well. not as viscous so it'll stick a little bit 
And then let's put a little bit on this one too. I may see about, see if I can get some uh, shrink tubing around it all to hold it. And then this one, let's see. I wish I had the pieces. See, I could just glue that. Could try and glue that in. I think I might see if I can. You can see what I did here. Just have it sitting there and then uh, I just wrapped that wire and then twisted it to pull it tight. You know, once this dries and hardens and all that, uh, I think I might work some uh, JB weld around it just to kind of build it up a little. I really don't want it to, to break because, you know, it holds the top on. Uh, the other ones, let's zoom you guys out a little bit, the other ones we're going to reinforce with some shrink tubing. Uh, some of you have seen me do that before. I have this piece in my hand but it's too too narrow. We're going to slide a piece over both of those that'll fit and then tighten it down, you know, uh, heat it and then it'll snug down. All right, here's the, let's see, I might, ooh, this kit's almost empty. I like these little assortment kits, it's handy. There's the, uh, I don't know, was that AliExpress, Banggood, whatever, they ship through Amazon. But this is from Amazon, and this is the stuff that has, like, the glue inside of it, so when it gets hot, it gets sticky, too. So what I want to do is basically this, and then we shrink it down. But let me make sure I don't have any sizes that are a little better. I was kind of thinking this one, let's see. Hmm. Maybe we use both. Put this one on first and then this one on over it. Let's see what happens. There's different different ways you can do this. Really the right way is the way that works at the end of the day. We'll make this a little shorter. Oh, come back. Come back. Yeah, I like that one. So that one, and then, let's see, yeah. So what that'll do is the inner one will snug down and then I'll uh, then tighten the outer one around it and that'll just lock it all together really nice. And then this side, use that first one that I cut for this, maybe. See, the problem is it's just a tiny bit too tall. I don't want to cover the uh, screw, the hole for the screw. We'll try that one, and then maybe we'll do the same thing. Will that fit over at all? Maybe. No, it won't. All right, I'm gonna go uh, get the hot air and do that. All right, so this isn't that hot. I only have it at, at 150 C. See the glue squeezing up. That, that one looks good. And then we'll do this one. 
It's a little tall. I might have to trim it, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm going to have to trim it. In fact, I think I might. Let's see. Can I make that work? Yeah, if I can make that work, it'll be all right. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim that just a little bit so I can get down to that screw okay. Let's go back to the projector. There we are. I just got the diagonal cutters and trimmed that back. Now this side it should be dry and it is. Let's get that off. leave that it actually feels really strong because with that that and then that that should probably be enough All right, let me straighten up here and then we'll get the projector now let's get the top we're gonna set the top on and then I want to try running it over my test area because I want to evaluate that brighter looking area. I don't think it's a light tunnel thing. It might be nothing. It actually just might be the way I'm shining it here. But oh, I didn't line up the uh, zoom ring properly. Thought I had it. the other screws out and uh, actually I'm going to wipe it down now. There is, looks like dried coffee or pop, soda, Coke, depending on where you live. Okay, so that's nice and clean. You can see it works. Yep. So let me put the lens cover or the focus ring thingy over there. Put my screwdrivers over there and let's bring this over to the test area. You can see it's booting up really nice. Now I have the uh, laptop that we're testing with starting. And uh, starting windows. So far the picture's gorgeous. Now I'm just waiting for uh, Chrome to pop up and then we'll put some YouTube on and uh, see what it, uh, what it looks like with a nice moving image. And now we have one of my favorite test patterns and that's using a fireplace um, these look like fake logs I'm sure that's a gas fire but either way 
it gives us nice motion, a good color range. So I like using these and it's just kind of comforting to have a little fire, you know, in a fireplace off to the side. So I'm gonna let this run uh, for about another hour. And as long as it keeps running for that hour, then uh, we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead, let this run, and I'll be back with you guys in about an hour. So keep watching. Still watching. All right, see you in a moment. Now we're back. Screws are back in. Focus adjuster's back on. It actually worked out really well, uh, the way I repaired those screws. This thing ran great. Nice projector. It's got a beautiful picture. The uh, the contrast is nice. The, the colors are nice. It's just a nice projector. So, yeah. Uh, needed a color wheel. Let's see. Need a color wheel. Um, keyboard wire. I may have been able to fix one. Fix the old one. But I had that one in my uh, scrap pile. So that worked out. And uh, we gave it a gentle cleaning. And I replaced the, uh, the bulb. So this projector... Is ready to go I'm going to actually probably sell this one um, I don't know we'll see but I think I'm gonna sell this one and uh, hopefully somebody can use it for an outdoor movie theater so anyway uh, if you have any questions about your Optima HD 180 or HD 20 or any of the other projectors in that series go ahead and stick your question down in the comments there and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can or any one of the other uh, intelligent, knowledgeable people who like to post on the channel could get back to you too. So post your questions and uh, hopefully you get some answers. And if you don't subscribe to me, think about clicking on that uh, subscribe button over there, here, wherever it is. I don't know. Uh, but more importantly, thank you for watching.